In this video, I want to answer the question, what are Muda, Mura, and Muri, and the seven wastes of lean? In Japan, waste is generally known as Muda, meaning wasted effort. But in fact, there are three forms of waste. Muda, wasted effort. Mura, inconsistency, and muri, unnecessary requirements. So, if we do things we don't need to be doing, that's muri. If we do them in a way that is inconsistent, then that's mura. And if we do them in a way that is inefficient, that's muda. Of the three, muda is by far the most important in the world of production and manufacturing. Taiichi Ono revolutionized the manufacturing process at Toyota to create what was known as the Toyota Production System, TPS, which gave birth to what we now think of as lean production or lean manufacturing. And the starting point of Ono's reforms was the concept of muda, of waste. So Ono staged a systematic campaign to eliminate all the forms of wasted effort that he could find. In doing so, he identified seven forms of waste, the seven wastes of lean production. The first waste is defective production. If we produce defective products, then we have to spend time identifying them, testing them, fixing them or replacing them and retesting them. And of course, we may not be able to recoup the cost of the raw materials. Secondly is overproduction. If we produce more than we need, that's a waste. It's even a waste if we produce more than we need at the time, which of course is the basis of just-in-time production. The third waste is waiting. If there is idle time when people aren't being productive, that's a waste. And this one is particularly relevant to us as project managers because we use the critical path method in our planning very often, and we also use the critical chain. Both of these are about reducing idle time. The fourth waste is transporting. Moving things or people or components from place to place takes time and introduces risks. People having to move from place to place creates health and safety risks, Objects or items moving from place to place could be broken or damaged in the process. The fifth waste is inventory. If we hold too much inventory, whether it's raw materials or work in progress or finished goods, then we are having to tie up capital to do so. If we've got our capital tied up in inventory, we can't be using it for anything else. And if we don't need it for anything else, then we are paying unnecessary interest on that capital and therefore it's a waste. The sixth waste is motion. Anything in motion will cause friction and that causes wear and tear, which creates an additional cost of higher levels of maintenance. And of course, people in motion, also subject to wear and tear, we call that health and safety risk. Oh no, seventh waste is over-processing. If we over-specify the functionality or the quality of something, and we spend money and time to develop a product to a higher specification than we actually need, then that is a form of waste. And of course, overcoming the risk of over-specifying the functionality is a primary concern of agile philosophies and the methodologies that support them. And of course, other people add additional wastes to supplement Ono's original seven. And the most common of them is non-used employee talent or wasted talent. The reason people often use the term non-used employee talent is because if you slip it in between items three and four in the listing in the order I've given it, it all spells out downtime. It's a great way of remembering it and almost a description of one of the wastes. By the way, Ono also developed a system of signboards that he used to track the progress of products through a factory. These signboards 
were called Kanbans. And we have a video on the use of the Kanban approach in project management. So what about Mura and Muri? Well, there's little said about them in the production environment, but they are both relevant to us as project managers. Mura is inconsistency. And of course, it's important to us as project managers not to create a slavish level of consistency. We need to be suitably agile, suitably flexible to adapt to the needs of our project. But without a doubt, if we give up on too much consistency, then it puts at risk important factors like governance, control, and efficiency. And lastly, MURI means unreasonable requirements. And what project manager won't recognize unreasonable requirements as one of the real challenges to our professional lives? Unreasonable requirements from clients, from sponsors, and from stakeholders can lead to wasted effort, delays to the schedule, running over budget, and a massive drain on our emotional energy. Muda, Mura, and Muri come from the world of Japanese manufacturing. But as project managers, it's important, firstly, to have a wider business awareness, and secondly, to recognize that some of the ideas we'll come across from other domains have useful applicability to us in our project management roles. Please do give a like if you've learned from this video. I'll be creating loads more project management content, so please do subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of it. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.